Today on the 700 Club Canada. When I was born, the astrologer told my father that it is not worth raising me as his daughter. He said it's better if you end her life now as a baby. It kind of poisoned his mind and thoughts towards me. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Ward. And I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. It's awesome to be with you today. It is. Good. And today is officially the first day of summer. I hope you're enjoying it with a whole lot of barbecue. Yeah. And it's also my mom's birthday. So is I want to say, yeah, oh, happy, happy birthday, 88th mom. birthday, mom. Oh, that's so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Well, have you ever been in a season of life where you were rolling along and then the next minute it felt like life is crashing in around you. I sure have. We all know that life can change in the blink of an eye. How we handle adversity impacts the rest of our lives. Now you said something with a little bit of uh, well, emphatic, I sure do know, When I, tell. Mm -hmm. When I went through my divorce and I mm. had to have the outfall of all of that, I remember describing it as a uh, crash with my car, like as if you're in you're in the the car of life, mm -hmm. and then you crash and everything's upside down and it feels like the car's totaled and you don't know which way is up and and there's a lot of pain, there's shame, there's uh, you feel like you're stigmatized, uh, you feel like what did I do wrong? What was my fault? What was the other person's fault? How yeah. how did this all happen? Because the dream was gone, mm. and that felt like uh, it was a real impact in life for me. I've gone through that. A couple of times uh, professional football and the draft not yes. getting drafted and working my whole life but there was another time when I really worked hard to drive this nation and pray for revival and we did a Canadian prayer assembly we did three and then after it felt like I just did a nosedive but mm. God was doing a work in my life and he says I'm building character for something greater that's right he always yeah. is whenever we're going through these crashes God mm. is building you for something greater Maybe you or someone you know is in this kind of season of uncertainty right now. We hope today's show will bring you some hope. If you want to share today's program with your friend or your family, let them know that they can visit our website at 700club.ca to watch this and other previous episodes and click on helpful resources and links for whatever the issues they're facing might be. But for those watching now, we have two powerful stories of overcoming adversity as well as a powerful faith forward segment that will absolutely bring you encouragement in any season. Mm. Well, coming up first, Gordon was cruising along in life on his motorcycle until a car hit him head on. Watch. On June 9th, 2016, 73-year-old Gordon Campbell was enjoying a motorcycle ride along U.S. Highway 2 near Libby, Montana. I met this oncoming car. There was no other traffic on the road. I was doing about 60 miles an hour. I would guess his speed about 70. As the vehicles got closer, the car crossed over the center line, hitting Gordon head on. I knew I was dead. Right on impact, I, I thought that was the end of it. So I called on the Lord, said, Lord Jesus, Gordon crashed into the windshield and bounced over the car, smashing the sunroof and rear window before going another 150 feet down the highway. I remember flying through the air and skidding on the ground and, and then finally coming to a stop. Gordon was dazed, but conscious. After I was on the ground for a short time, I heard these voices talking and there was two women's voices and a man's voice. They asked if they could pray for me. Lord Jesus, God, I pray in the name of Jesus for healing for this man. I distinctively felt three hands on my back. Take away all his pain. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh God, we just bring this man before the throne. You see him in his condition, God, and we just believe for miracles. I felt reassured. I felt safe. I felt comfortable. I didn't want the prayer to end. So they finished praying, and I thought, boy, I better, I better thank these people. And I turned around, and there was no one there. 
Gordon was taken to Cabinet Peaks Medical Center with multiple fractures. By then, Gordon's wife had been called and told he was in an accident. Then she learned he was being airlifted to Kootenai Health Hospital in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, two hours away. And so then I started realizing it was really pretty serious. But at the same time, my spirit was really at peace. Still, doctors were concerned about brain trauma or other internal injuries. Gordon's surgeon, Dr. Joseph Bowen, explains. Normally, a person who sustained an auto versus motorcycle accident, that trauma can be really severe. You have a potential for a lot of internal injuries. Eventually, Karen and other family members arrived. It looked pretty bad. It was pretty scary. All the family came in really, really quickly. A lot of people praying for us. You're doing wonderful. Oh, Still Despite the violent impact, Gordon had no head, spine, or internal injuries. I was very impressed with actually how good he looked, considering Gordon had sustained a fracture or a broken bone in his elbow. He had also fractures in his foot and a fracture in his leg around his knee. Really, the elbow was the most pressing a concern at that point. Dr. Bowen performed surgery, and Gordon made a complete recovery. It's a miracle of healing. I think his faith played a tremendous role in his outcome and how well he's done. Gordon and Karen say he's here today because of God's love and protection. That's miraculous that I'm able to even walk around or even be here. I believe the Lord just protected me. Uh, either directly or through his angels. I'd heard a lot about miracles, but that was the first time that we had experienced one that was so overwhelming and so obviously the Lord Jesus protecting him. People ask how we're doing and I tell them about the accident. They always say, oh, he must have had a really good helmet. And I no, he had a really good Jesus. Clearly, and I love that because you must have had a great helmet. No, we had a great Jesus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you know what it goes to show is sometimes, like I was talking about when I went through uh, my divorce and I felt like that, you know, it, it was a car crash and everything. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, when I look back at my life, I don't even feel scars right yeah. now. Like I can tell you that the healing that Jesus does is it's mm. not like you're wearing armor, but you have a great Jesus in the middle of your disaster. And he has been a redemptive. That's why my book, it's called Relentless Redemption yeah. because he never has let me go and he's never let you go no matter what difficulties we've gone through. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, and I love that because uh, during this time, what was happening happening with Gordon is he said that there were three people and he heard them praying laying yes. hands and everything else That's and pivotal, uh, but actually. he could not see them yeah. so many times in that moment you need to pray and get people praying around you yeah. that the peace of Jesus would flood into your situation and, and don't you. go it alone we want to get something to you it doesn't cost you anything 1-855-759-0700 just request it and we'll send that out to you right away but I really believe that today you're going to see a turnaround in that situation. And just like when the children of Israel went through the Red Sea, you're going to go through the sea, but let God lead you because you're not going to look like what you've come through when mm. you get to the other side. You won't even have mud between your toes. Mm. I feel to say this, that this crash you're going through, it's not as bad as you think. God no. is bringing a miracle out of this season of, of discomfort and upheaval. Coming up next, Facing Homelessness, a devout Hindu finds hope in church. Amen. When I was born, the astrologer told my father that it is not worth raising me as his daughter. He said it's better if you end her life now as a baby. It kind of poisoned his mind and thoughts towards me. Radha was raised in a devout Hindu family in India. She had a strained relationship with her father, one that worsened over time. Every business failure he endured or financial loss, he blamed it on me. He became an alcoholic and he abused us, you know, physically and uh, verbally. She sought comfort and acceptance in her family's faith. Every time I went to Hindu temples and worshiped gods and goddesses, there was peace. But when I came out of the temples, 
there was always a void. And that void was so strong. Hopelessness was always there. Radha turned to education in her search for purpose. She excelled in her studies. I did my master's in medical and psychiatric social work. And after I completed that, I was uh, given a job to work as a counselor in a cancer hospital. She provided care and comfort for many of the patients. However, this only deepened the emptiness she felt in her own life. People were suffering, you know, young and old. Some of them had asked me what would happen to their soul once they die. I didn't have any answers. I felt really desperate, so I kind of filled my void with more education. Radha received a scholarship to study in America, but life here seemed harder than ever. The culture shock was so great. I missed home, my family. I couldn't concentrate much, and my grades started going down. She was on the verge of losing her scholarship, but she had a greater problem. I had only $36 in my account, and my Social Security card was stamped not authorized for work. It was impossible for Radha to pay for her own education, and she was unable to afford a plane ticket back to India. The fear of being homeless took over. You know, I was really afraid of the future, didn't know what would happen to me in this foreign land. It was a major crisis in my life. Radha sought help from the only source she knew, I cried out to all the Hindu gods and goddesses and asked them, which of you is a true living God so I can just cry to one of you? I'm crying to all of you not knowing who is hearing my prayers. I heard these are man-made images. I'm a holy God. Go to church, you will find me. I said, there is absolutely no way. That, that couldn't be true. I rejected that thought. But in my desperation, when the thought was so strong, I needed an answer. A fellow student invited her to church. I sat in the last seat and I started listening to them worshiping. There was such joy in my heart, I couldn't explain. There was peace in my heart. The pastor said that God wants to have a relationship with me as a father-daughter relationship. All I have to do is just repent for my sins, invite Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I was a pride-filled person. I said, there is no way I'm a sinner. I'm a good person. I'm a good social worker. I've helped hundreds of people in my life. She refused the pastor's invitation. Over the next few weeks, she wrestled with these thoughts. But one night, she had a vision. When I laid down and uh, trying to sleep, it was like a movie, all the things that are not right in the eyes of God. When I saw that, if these are wrong and sinful in the eyes of God, then I should ask for forgiveness. So I got on my knees by my bed and I said, God, I ask for your forgiveness. And uh, I don't know much about Jesus, but I invite him as my only Lord and Savior. The emptiness and loneliness started to disappear. Now I have this God, the personal God, that would walk with me that would carry me through, that would guide me and counsel me and minister to me. So the fear was taken away from me. From then onwards, miracle after miracle after miracle happened in my life. She received a scholarship to another university which extended her visa. She also moved into a Christian woman's home where she was mentored in a relationship with God. Radha's married now with a family of her own. She has full assurance that she found the true God she was looking for. Jesus gave me the sense of security and peace and joy and hope. When, when you really embrace God's love, then there is no fear and there is no loneliness, no more loneliness. His love surrounds you and He blesses you. You know, that is so powerful. And what, what Rada said, and I, I wrote that down. She says, um, I was full of pride and uh, I was a good person. And to say that I was a sinner, I just couldn't say that. But when I said that, then peace began to flood into my heart. You know, that's really what salvation is about. The Bible says that there is none righteous. There is none that does good. No, not one. 
But Christ, who came, he became perfect for us. So it's not about perfection as much as it is perfect process. I wonder if you've been trying to be perfect instead of being in the perfect process of God. I heard at the end when she says, when you really embrace God's love and then there's, there's no fear, there's no loneliness, there's no more, uh, no more pain. I don't care what your family background is, God can turn it around. But you got to put your faith in him. Just like me sitting in this chair, you put your full weight in that and God is going to turn it around. I want to get something into your hands. Cost you nothing, 1-855-759-0700. But I want you to pray this prayer and say, Pastor B, after this, I prayed with you. Jesus, I surrender. I can't do it anymore. I turn my life over to you. I surrender and I confess my sin. Please come into my heart and make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name. It's that simple. If you've made that declaration of faith, 1-855-759-0700. Call the number and say, Pastor B, it's me. Yay, today's your birthday. Well, up next, Laura Lynn has even more encouragement as a part of her Faith Forward series. Don't go away. The man I've been working with was on his knees above my body, but on each side of him was a huge angel. He seemed to just emerge through the door and floated out on, on the ground. She started pointing and she was saying monster. Discover the truth in Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. In this DVD, you'll gain biblical insight into these mysterious creatures. Learn their purpose in God's kingdom and their role in your life. Plus, meet people who've had real encounters with angels. God sent an angel to pull Lisa out of that car. You're going to be a believer by the time this is finished. Call now to get your copy of Angels. Available now. My question for Canadians today is what is the cause or issue in our nation that will make you speak out more boldly? We are known for being so polite. We wouldn't dare raise the issue of God's principles to the world around us or even to our loved ones at a family dinner for fear of offending somebody. Recently, one woman told me that it was when she could not stomach one more story of the injustice of the child sex human trafficking issue that she knew that she would begin doing whatever it took to raise awareness in her community and become an advocate for young women. She simply could not bear to be silent for one more day. What was it that compelled in the Bible Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to lay their lives on the line and face death in the eye being thrown into the fiery furnace for their refusal to bow to King Nebuchadnezzar's idol? I believe there came a point, a line in the sand, if you will, that forced them to not be able to live with the hypocrisy that they would have to bear of bowing to something they knew was a lie. David, in the Bible, fought Goliath when he could no longer be silent against the insults from the giant Philistine who railed against God and the Israelites themselves. Even David's brothers, who were seasoned warriors, told David to be quiet, go back, look after those few sheep that you have yet there was something in David's heart and it rose up and he knew that he could not live with himself if he didn't stand up to this evil he would rather die trying to war against it than live with the lack of courage it would take to be silent he looked at his brothers and he said powerful sentence is there not a cause what is our cause today? What is the tipping point when we say this far and no further? For some reason, there were those throughout the Bible who simply reviled the evil in front of them more than they valued the safety of their own beings. Look at Daniel. He chose to risk everything rather than stop praying to the one true living God. Was he afraid of the lions? I think he would have been. I think he would have counted the cost, knowing this might not turn out so well by earthly terms. Yet, he knew that he could not live with caving in to the godless society that surrounded him. He had to be courageous. He had to be brave. And God saved him from those lions. 
There were others in the word of God who gave their lives for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Most of Jesus' disciples, in fact, they were martyred in the early church as they took the scandalous message of the Messiah into all the world. They have a tremendous crown waiting for them. Yet with all of our comforts, our homes and our cars and the entertainment we have, most of us, we still dare not speak of our faith in the lunchroom of our workplaces. We don't want to offend others by speaking against the rising evil in our culture. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his own soul? If there were one thing I pray for Canada, it's that we learn to speak up against injustice and evil. May it be so compelling to speak that we cannot live with ourselves if we don't. Lynn, I really enjoy your Faith Forward segments. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. It is fun to be able to share the powerful mm -hmm. Word of God, what we've learned, and what we know is that what uh, what we believe here is truth. It's yes. not, uh, this isn't just something that we do because, you know, it's a it's a, a job. We believe in the power of the Word of God to change lives. That's why we're here every single day. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we also believe in the power of God to do everything but fail. Yeah. You know, when we look at angels in the Bible, there are more occurrences mm -hmm. after the resurrection than there are really before the resurrection. There were a multitude of angels that came and said, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, who, whom God's favor rest. If you've ever wanted to understand a little bit more about angels, we've got a great premium for you, and it'll help you discover these angelic messengers, uh, what their purpose is, what their presence is, and also what their power is. Mm. You know, if this topic interests you, call us today. We will get this DVD out to you immediately, one 759 700 And I do love this topic. Yes, yeah. please call now and link arms. It would be such an encouragement. And thank you for your praise reports. Thank you for liking us on social platform, Instagram, Facebook, and answering those questions. But would you put on your prayer list, Nicole from Waterloo? Mm. She's asking for prayer for her family. And Helen, prayer for her daughter, Patricia. Father, we just thank you, Lord, uh, that you are so good and so kind. I thank you, Lord, that you love our families, that mm. you carry each one of our children in the palm of your hands, that, God, you know what dark paths they might travel down, and you never, ever let them go. I pray for this mother's heart today, Lord, for her daughter, that you would intervene, that you would intercede, O oh God, that you would bring about great circumstances that are miraculous testimonies of your goodness in this family's life. God, we know that you loved the prodigal son and that you saw that, that uh, man as he went on his journey, oh God, and even allowed a, a pig pen experience so that he would be brought back. Sometimes, Father, it's painful to watch these circumstances, but we believe, God, for a miracle-ending testimony at the end of this story in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, for Nicole, we do pray for her family, and I pray a pastoral blessing on her and those of our partners. Come on, lift up your hands right where you are. As you said in Numbers 6 and 26 to Moses and Aaron, this is how you are the blessed to people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance, his favor upon you, and grant you his shalom, his peace. The blessing of the Lord be upon you and your family that makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, our power verse today is Matthew 8, 24 and 26. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. Have you ever felt that? Yeah, but Jesus was sleeping. Oh. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely Be calm. calm. Mm. Stay calm until next time. God bless. God bless. On a scale of one to 10, the pain was 10 and above. 
it was discouraging. The range of motion that I had with using my arms and my upper shoulders was very, very limited. And I was raising two boys by myself at the time, and I had to keep working. When a car accident left Diane Pillmeyer with permanent muscle damage in her back, doctors told her she would have to live with pain and limited range of motion the rest of her life. But Diane trusted God for her healing. I know I have a great physician in heaven who's my father and who takes care of me. I had to learn patience. I just had to wait on his time. Diane says she prayed for years until one day God healed her of her back pain and restored most all of her range of motion. But by then, she had also been having frequent headaches. I just had to rely on the Lord, getting through the moments of pain, getting through the headaches, waiting patiently for his time to move. A few years later, she learned from a chiropractor that her spine was still under stress, which was causing the headaches. Treatments offer temporary relief, but she knew only God could completely heal her. Then in June 2015, she was watching the 700 Club. This one particular day, Terry had a word of knowledge. There's someone else, you have a spinal issue. I don't know what it is, but it, you have some kind of a block to the impulses that need to connect down your spine. God is healing that condition for you. I felt a chill. I felt a warmth. I was getting so excited. I knew that that healing was for me. Immediately, I could tell 100% of healing had taken place. I just felt on top of the world. For the first time in years, Diane was completely pain-free. I attribute all that healing to the great physician, my God, my Savior, Jesus. I now can do all the work I need to do during the day, have energy in the evening for my son, it pays to be patient. Sometimes it's hard to step out in faith, but as soon as you take that step of faith, the Lord meets you. In the end, He will take care of you. He has your back. Now there are more ways to connect with the 700 Club Canada online. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 700 Club Canada. Find us on Instagram at 700 Club Canada or follow us on Twitter at 700 Club Canada. Just email cba at 700club.ca or visit us at 700club.ca. On tomorrow's show... I didn't realize the reason why I was vomiting is because I was dying. On February 2nd, 2006, John Funderburg woke up with intense abdominal pain. 